This month's passenger profile is Uwe Schei from a little town in Norway, and I'm really thrilled to have him on with me. Uwe, thank you for joining me. And what is the name of the town that you're in? It's a place called Stockmarknes, and it's like about 68 degrees up north. So if you take it to the North America, it's way up in the territories, wow. almost to the coastline, northern coastline. You mentioned Alaska. in uh, our email exchanges that you get two months out of the year with total darkness. Yeah. So it's almost like total darkness. We have like, uh, it, 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 it is dark, you know. So, so, so you don't have daylight or anything. So it's, it's like uh, when you wake up, it's dark. When you go to bed, it's dark. So, so it's, it's just like, oh man, where's the sun, you know? <laughs> so. I, I would be so depressed. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, uh, uh, if, if you want to go into that, you know, it, it, it's kind of interesting because I mean, like when you come to come to January, you know, and you, you get to see that the sky is lighting up, you know, and you, you get to see the lighter blue shades of colors and all that. And then the first rays of the sun that you get in your face and it's winter, you know, yeah. and you can just feel life energy and everything it's just amazing and you wouldn't get that feeling if it wasn't for the darkness That's there you it. go <laughs> <laughs> always good to have light do you get the northern lights where you are oh yeah 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 we've been having fantastic northern lights now lately with with the purple colors and all that as well wow that i've been this of for sure so yeah i don't remember in the 32 years that i've been running taxi i don't remember ever having a, another member from norway although we used to have an employee in the 90s from norway but we've never <laughs> oh. had a member that i was aware of certainly one that's um was becoming successful and you mentioned that you joined taxi in 2018 but before that you were playing gigs and you're a multi-instrumentalist who plays his guitar upside down and backwards because yeah. you're a lefty. <laughs> yeah. um, tell us about that, the, the whole uh, backwards guitar thing and, and how you solved yeah. that problem. Well, the, the story is like this. So, so I've, I, I've always been left-handed, of course. And um, I, I used to, to, to break into my brother's room because he had a record collection, you know, and he's like uh, eight years older than me. So, and I always used to listen to his music when he was away, you know, and, um, and all that. And I was just like sort of starting to look at the guitar, acoustic guitar, a huge one. And I was a little one, you know, so, and I was looking more and more and I was just sort of dragged to it. And um, I just started to pick it up, you know, and, but it was too big, so I couldn't wrap my arms around <laughs> it, you know. So, so, so basically I, I started to play like Jeff Healy before oh, Jeff yeah. Healy started to play like Jeff Healy. So I, I started to play like this, you know, and I didn't have any chord books or anything, but I think I've always been blessed with a, a huge amount of musicality, not to brag or anything, but, but, but I actually found my own chords. I found the notes that matched. I didn't know what their name was, but I knew a difference from the minor to the major, even sevens, before wow. I even got the chord book. So, so it was just all in my head. And ryth rhythmic-wise, it was just everything was working. I didn't know what swing was or rock was or anything, but uh, it just worked out. So when I finally, my big hero, Paul McCartney, you know, <laughs> so when uh, I, I found out I couldn't sit like this playing, you know, because it looked uh, rather strange, <laughs> weird. So, so I decided to, to pick the guitar up, you know, and I gotten a big bit older and a bit bigger as well. So I, I actually tried to turn it the right way. But I couldn't make the right hand work on the rhythm. So it, it just uh, didn't work out. The chords and everything was fine. But so then I switched it around and oh, yeah, there you go. So that's the end of the story. And, and I, I can uh, actually show you here. Yeah, so, please. Yeah, I have this. This is a left hand guitar. All right. So okay. uh, if you turn it like this, it's a right hand guitar. Right. <laughs> because you have the bass strings on top. So yeah. this is like Jimi Hendrix played on the left hand, <laughs> you know, but when I switch this around, so this is how I play. So your so, bass strings are on the bottom, closest yeah. to the floor. Okay. Yeah. And just to make things worse, I just bought a new Fender Stratocaster, an Ultra. It's a nice gem. So uh, 
so I've actually talked to my guitar, not guitar tech, but I have this uh, this guy in a town further up north who's very good on doing guitars, setting them up and everything, you know. And uh, so I was planning on uh, having him um, switching the strings around on this one. Yeah. But then I started to play around with the thought of learning to play like a normal left hand. So that's what I'm doing now. Wow, <laughs> you are truly ambidextrous. <laughs> I, I think it's important to 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 uh, keep your head busy as you grow older. So, mm -hmm. because and, that, that that is mind blowing. Because everything, every muscle memory you have, and everything you know, it's it wants to go the other way. So, sure. so it's just like oh. <laughs> So, You're a better man a, than I am. I, my muscle memory would be stuck with one thing, and, and I could never do what you've done. But you, you also play bass and keyboards as well, right? Yeah, yeah. I started to play bass actually quite old, but but uh, it was a normal. Uh, I, I think it was it just had to happen. I always loved bass, you know. I was supposed to be a drummer actually, but uh, my mom wouldn't let me. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, guess, well, I guess she was afraid of all the noise. <laughs> That's, I bought my uh, my oldest grandson for his fifth birthday. I brought him bought him a drum kit just to piss off my daughter. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, uh, what are your musical influences? Who were you listening to as a like you know thirteen year old to college age in that range? Well, I, I've always been fascinated by by. Uh, I always hung like ten years, you know. So I've been like when when ABBA and Bonnie M and all that was like popular. You know, I was listening to Beatles, Rolling Stones, and every basically everything from late fifties and up through the sixties and seventies. So, so I always been like ten years after a band, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, and uh, it 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 it's now actually lately that I've been starting to listening to modern music as well. So and, so, uh, uh, but but my biggest influence is Beatles, of course. I mean, I always loved the Beatles because. You always have this discussion about Beatles and Rolling Stones. Right. So who's the greatest band? Who's the, who's the greatest player? I mean, I, I don't understand the discussion. <laughs> I don't either. I was, uh, I like the Stones. I actually, yeah. I yeah, love yeah, yeah. some of the Stone songs, but the Beatles yeah. were just better. But, but, but it's a garage band compared to Beatles. I, I, I don't understand the comparison. So, so, I mean, everything that Rolling Stones have done, the Beatles have done. And Rolling Stones have done nothing what the Beatles have done. End of discussion. <laughs> I like the way you think we're going to have 30% uh, of the people who watch this are going to be typing in, you know, hateful comments. No, it's the Rolling Stones. But... Pro probably going to get some, some hitmen after me or something like now. <laughs> Sorry, I had to mute my phone there. Um, so uh, okay. else, uh, Pink Floyd has been a huge, uh, I always loved Gilmore, you know, he, the way he makes his guitar sing uh, without being busy or using a lot of notes, you know, it's just like, it's all heart feeling, you know, yeah. so it's just amazing. So Pink Floyd has always been a huge influence as well. So at what point, because you've only been a taxi member for like five, six years, and what made you join Taxi? I mean, did you just wake up one day and think, <laughs> you know, I should do something with my music other than playing live gigs? Um, were you mostly interested in doing uh, film and TV music? How did it all happen? Well, I've, I've always been composing music and as, I, as I, I even wrote songs before I could sing and play guitar. <laughs> And, and uh, I recorded them, you know, with, with just like blah, blah, blah lyrics, you know, because I didn't know English or anything, you know, so, so, uh, and, and uh, I've, I've been doing some media music like 20 years ago, you know, uh, and, uh, but, but I, I just sort of like felt I had something in me that needed to be used or to, to, to be achieved or whatever, you know. So I actually started to 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 uh, search the internet because I knew to getting into like uh, TV, film, stuff like that was a really hard wall to break down. So so I 
I had to find an opener, you know, and how can a guy from up north in Norway find an opener in the United States of America? You know, I mean, hello. <laughs> so, so, so actually, uh, uh, I was searching for publishers, of course. And then I was thinking, no, let's go for independent publishers. Because a, a, a publisher wouldn't give a, about me sending him an email or MP3s or anything because he haven't the time. So uh, on top of that list came Taxi, you know, and I started to investigate and I started to Google Taxi as well, just to find out if it was a scam, of course. Of course. And uh, I, I found the same things that you have mentioned on one episode of Taxi TV uh, a couple of years ago, where you have people who's basically pissed off because they didn't make it or anything. But uh, I found it looked like the, uh, 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 a real thing, you know. So, so um, well, I just paid up and uh, the rest is history. So, yeah. so um, film and TV was your main goal. And how did you find writing to the listings or briefs versus just creating whatever the muse brought you on any given day? Did you like that challenge? and having some direction? Or are you more of a free spirit that's a creator uh, when the muse shows up? I've always been a free spirit, you know, and that's my biggest enemy, you know, <laughs> uh, because it, 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 it just like slows down everything I do, but I'm, I'm getting better, you know, at, at uh, keeping the pace up and, and try to forget about unnecessary details and blah, 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 that you basically don't need because no one's going to hear them anyway. So, so uh, we'll get back to that if you're going to talk about plugins and such. Yeah, I'm going to write but, that down. I'm going to dedicate an episode of Taxi TV to unnecessary details. So, but, but, but anyway, I found the listings, you know, were, were quite detailed. So it was like easy to get a grasp on what was needed and wanted but at the same time i norwegian you don't know what's going on in the us so mm. i actually started to watch a lot of films uh, especially american films and uh, american tv series uh stuff that i never would have watched if it wasn't for a taxi but i felt i had to get into how is it being used? When it's been used? How? What does it sound like? How do you mix this? You know, to make All it great points. Uh, it's amazing. A lot of people think that it's like the record industry where you just write a great song, and the better it is, the better chance you have of getting it used. You took what I think is a very commendable approach, which is analytical in the beginning and then you apply your creativity to the path that the analysis lays out. Yeah, and, and so, so but, but I tried to do it that way. And, and as you said, I set myself a five-year goal. And I was actually having a, a big argument with myself. And it, it was quite loud, actually, <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> uh, 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 Uwe number one said, no, at three years, something that you have made is going to be used somewhere within three years. No problem. No problem, sir. <laughs> Are you mad? You know how quickly three years goes, you know, and so that was a discussion and we, we settled on five years and I was glad I did because uh, I achieved my goal with uh, and, and, and like the, oh. the, the, the terror there was that broke was like um, three episodes on Hulu and ABC, you know, so where I got music in. So, so that was just amazing, you know. That was the TV show, The Con, right? Yeah, that was The Con, yeah, yeah. Wow. Um so how many years into your membership before you signed your first deal with a publisher? That was like uh, nine months before uh, my five year term had reached the limit. Okay. So, uh, it was, yeah. And how long after the stuff was signed into that catalog did it get placed uh, on that ABC TV show? Oh, uh, actually, that went rather quick because uh, it was an. Uh, his uh, the publisher is based in LA, outside in LA. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, he's a really nice guy, uh, and um, he was actually looking for music. I think specifically for that episode, ah. or that series. I think I haven't asked him about it, but but uh, because. Uh, 
he took the songs very quickly, you know, and, and oh, yeah, I want to have you got more, have you got more, you have you got more. And it was just like, uh, I think a couple of months after I received the first email, I was actually on, on my way to a gig and driving in my car, you know, and uh, congratulations, Uwe, blah, 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 listen, you got music in the episode number two of the con, blah, blah, blah. Oh, man, wow. Yay! <laughs> you know, yeah. and but, but at the same time, I was so surprised, you know, so I, I, it really didn't sort of sink in, you know, so so I was just like driving on and, and the day after another email came from, <laughs> from from the same guy. Yeah, you got music in episode number one, because he obviously got the cue sheets then, you know, right. from whatever he sent in. And and so and then came another email, you know, the third one. So so that was just like uh, instead of knowing that you have three songs, I got three surprises. So that was great. So uh, wow, yeah. that must have felt amazing. And oh. uh, you know, I mean, look, I, I understand. You know, English isn't your first language. You don't know the American market well, but you obviously learned English really, really well. Which you know, it'd be Thank hard you. if you only spoke Norwegian dealing with a largely English based industry. So congratulations on that. And then uh, I, I'm really enamored with the fact that you did your homework before, uh, because you mentioned in one of your emails that you made all the classic mistakes, which we'll talk about in a minute. But that was not a mistake it's studying the marketplace, studying the shows, the types of things they used. I wish I could get every new taxi member to take that approach because their results would be a lot better and people would be much happier, much more quickly. So tell me about the mistakes that you made, because maybe you can save a life out there. <laughs> yeah. All right. But let's take, I, I think uh, some of your big guys that you have within taxi have talked about this before, but if if you sort of like, get a relationship with your <clears throat> with your publisher and you have a good tone in the emails and maybe you even get a bit private as well you know and 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 so uh i think it's easy to 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 sort of like you go outside the professional sphere so you you sort of being a bit too friendly make makes you uh, makes you think that you just have to deliver and you just don't maybe think about what you deliver if you understand what i'm saying right. because you know this guy you know uh he's my friend you know <laughs> and and uh so so um I, i've had a couple of mistakes where I, i've been like sensing in the emails that i got back from the publisher that he wasn't quite pleased with what i've been doing you know and i'm, I'm really glad i got that because that made me that gave me the chance to think differently again, you know, and get back to zero and start again, you know. And uh, I've been did you, yeah. I'm sorry, to did you mean that the publisher didn't feel good about the music or that you got? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. because okay. I've, I forgot about being professional. You know, I, I mean, he was like, uh, I was thinking more on, on a friendly basis, you know, so so I really forgot the professional bits. So and that was a big, big, big bummer, you know. But I've been I've been very very fortunate with uh, with uh, with the two publishers that have uh, gotten me the placements and all that. Uh, this number one with ABC is he's just a very great guy, and the other one I want to touch in on you, with, who you know very well. He's um, he can be like brutal. I've sent him stuff, and he, he he all that comes back in an email. No, don't like it! Exclamation mark! <laughs> exclamation mark! Exclamation mark! And then his name and that's it right but, uh, but so, i'm guessing that he doesn't do it that way out of out of hatred or animosity no, 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 so no. much as that's he's, point. So he's moving quickly you... and short on words <laughs> yeah exactly but, but but he hasn't got a time to 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 give me an analysis of what is wrong and all that you know and you said this a lot of times you know the publishers don't have the time so what you have to do then as a composer, uh, you have to all right, forget about it. Don't even th try to rewrite it or remix it or re blah, 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 shuffle it or whatever you want to do, you know, forget about it. Use it for something else. Keep it and create something new. Yeah. You know, go back to the original. What, what did he want? You know, go back to that and start again. 
So how so, did you um, how did you learn about writing uh, in typical musical in in musical forms for media versus regular songs or do you still do stuff in regular song form oh you know what let me scratch that question for a moment and ask you do you do mostly instrumental or mostly songs now i'm doing mostly instrumentals but i'm still making songs and i have a couple of songs signed with a with a, a uk library actually but that's it that is actually like 60s uh, sounding stuff you know yeah. So so uh, it all comes back, you know. So, but 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 I I I write mostly instrumental. I think it's because I'm being lazy. But I I I I've been in the process for the last couple of years, you know, to try to to get my life around a bit as well. As I mentioned in the email to you, because I was I was really on a bad bad path, you know, with uh, after playing gigs for forty years, you know, wow. and. Um, uh, I was just like, uh, I think if, if I hadn't stopped that, I probably would have ended up in a place where you don't want to be. And that's a very dark place. It's a very dark place. I was on my way. I think I was this close, actually. Wow. I'm glad but, you made yeah. the right decision. And funny enough, I mean, for a musician to go, you know what, I think I'm going to take up truck driving in the last you know quarter of my life and but it sounds like it worked out great because it's steady income you know where you're going to be when you're going to be there you don't have to worry well about you don't know where you're going to be or when you're going to be actually oh, okay. <laughs> so, <No>. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a different corrected. story but but, but but i have my own company i have one company for for uh for for my music um, for gigs and the music composing and all that and then i have a separate co company with pensions and everything you know where you pay your taxes and all that you know so so um uh so i actually just hire myself out so i have different ah. people hiring me in you know so uh uh, and that gives me the ability to say no to the guys who doesn't keep their trucks in order and all that, you know, which is a nice thing. You don't want to drive 50 tons without having good tires and good brakes because yeah. it just doesn't want to stop. <laughs> well, stopping is good. Um, yes, does, it is good. You, uh, does it afford you time? Do you like sing melodies into your phone and stuff in the truck? Yeah, actually, yes, I do. So, and, 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 uh, here, here's a little tip for people uh, on that basis because if you got this melody line in your head or a theme line or whatever you know and you also hear the bass notes and you pro probably hear some chords in your head you know and but what you sing in is like the melody line mm -hmm. so when you get back and you're gonna make something out of this because this was just a great idea and you're gonna you don't know what chord it was supposed to be in. You don't know what the bass or, the, or like the, the root notes are. And you know that a, a set of notes can can easily be used on any chords, you know. Right. So you so you actually lost the, the, the whole picture. You have this melody line, which is great, but without without the whole thing it's so how do you so solve how do you solve that problem no that and, and and that's a little tip you know if you if you if you sort of like hear the chords you, you just like say the chords you know and it doesn't matter what key it is in but just say the chords you know blah 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 and then you sing the bass notes first so you have the root of the chords okay. and then you sing your team in after that so we have like three different recordings so one long recording and <laughs> And then, then when you come back to the studio or your uh, your uh, cozy room where you make music, you have everything you need. And then you can just like put things together, and it'll be yeah. This was what I was thinking, you know. How long ago? Speaking of putting things together, how long ago did you learn how to do a recording with your DAW? How did what? First of all, what do you use? Do you use uh, Pro Tools or Logic? And how did you learn it and how long did it take? I actually use uh, Cubase. Okay. And, and the reason is, I'm going to answer two of your questions in one, because uh, back in the days when you had like, you, 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 do you remember the Atari? Yeah. 
computer and you had the Amiga as well. Uh, and um, I had an Atari ST1040, which had a built-in MIDI. And uh, so uh, I bought Cubase back then, and I think this must have been in the nine, early in the 90s or okay. something. 1990 or something, yeah. And uh, it came on 21 discs. Wow. That you had to, to <laughs> load the program. <laughs> I, I actually have them in my, in my room, just, just there. I kept the discs, you know. It's yeah. a stable like this, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I always been, been using Cubase, actually. So, so it's, um, uh, and, and Cubase has always been very good on, on MIDI stuff, you know, and, and editing MIDI and all that. It's been actually better than Pro Tools. Uh, Pro Tools has come along for the last couple of uh, three, four years. They really started to dig in on the MIDI stuff. But, but, um, but uh, before that, uh, Cubase, Logic, and most any other huge door were better uh, than Pro Tools on the MIDI stuff. But on audio, Pro Tools were, of course, the industry standard. So did you watch videos on YouTube, which back in the early 90s, probably, uh, I don't even remember when YouTube started, but I think it was probably uh, the mid to late 90s. So how did, how did you learn how to use Cubase? Yeah, how do you learn? <laughs> no, uh -huh. I'm uh, the, the, uh, just testing, checking things out, you know, and, and uh, yeah. So it's just like you walk into a room, all right, what can I do here? You know, there's a sofa, I can sit in the sofa, all right, go sit in the sofa. There's a table, oh, I can put my coffee cup on the table. Let's put the coffee cup on the table. <laughs> I can drink from it, yes, <laughs> etc. So then you take step by step and you find out everything. And uh, I actually got hold of internet quite early. So I, I found this PDF book or Maybe it wasn't even PDF, but but it was something electronic format, you know. So I found a, a, a not even a user manual, but it was something someone had written about Cubase, which sort of like uh, gave me the whole picture of it. But I actually have made quite a bit of music on Cubase before I got hold of that. And how did you learn about what's a good bass sound or what's a good acoustic guitar sound? I, a lot of people may understand the, the electronics uh, that comes with the DAW, but I see that for a lot of people just starting out, understanding how to get good sounds, unless they're using samples, they're already good, but if they're recording organic instruments, uh, it's often quite difficult for them to understand an EQ curve or what compression yeah. really does and how to use these things as, you know, as your friendly tools versus uh, the enemy that frustrates you, so to speak. So how did you learn that stuff? Well, well, I guess that's where the live musician comes uh, come, comes in, you know, because I've always been my own sound engineer, you know, playing live, either if it was with a band or whatever, you know. So you just had to learn to, to, to all right, what does this button do, you know? So, and you just use your ears, basically, you know? And I mean, I mean, there's nothing... Um, there's nothing more to it, actually. I mean, you 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 hear when it's good because you know what it's going to sound like, well, and what you want it to sound like. So then you just have to to find out how to make it, and it all right. You do a lot of errors, you know, and all of a sudden you forget that when you get the bass and drums in playing together, no, that doesn't sound good. But it sounds good when they play one and one, you know. Right. So what's the reason for this, you know? And then you have to think, you know. Oh, probably they're colliding frequencies or whatever, you know. So, so and then you have to deal with that. And then you just like grow and grow and grow and you get better and better. So I'll, I've been using that experience with, with, uh, with uh, what I'm doing now. Well, wow. And I've never been in your afraid approach. of trying anything. I've never been afraid of any button. And I, 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 I always found, uh, give me any synthesizer and I will figure it out. Wow. Uh, yeah. your attitude is refreshing because so many people look at the, for instance, that recording console sitting there on my green screen, yeah. people look at that and they're amazed that anybody can run that. But really all it is, I always tell people it's like 56 stereos 
pan left, pan right, pan center. Um, high frequencies, mid frequencies, low frequencies, yeah. more yeah. volume, less volume, reverb or no reverb. If you can yeah. operate your stereo at home, if you don't let the, the sheer number of buttons freak you out, not that hard. All you need to know is one of those channel strips. If you know one of those, you know the rest. Yeah. Yeah. So, so instead of looking at the big problem, look isolated and find out what you're going to do with one thing, and then you can use that on other things as well. So, yeah. Um, you're obviously not 30 years old, as I think I said before. No. <laughs> I think we're in a similar age category. And one of the things that I personally love about sync is it doesn't matter if you're fat, you're skinny, you're short, you're tall, you're black, you're white, you're male, you're female, you're old, you're young. None of that matters. It's all about the music. It's a very uh, um, democratic process. It's, it's does the music work for this scene or does it not? Um, but still, uh, you know, the older you are, the more set in your ways you are. And those of us in the generation that we are, I was, I was uh, sitting in a waiting room at a hospital a couple of days ago, watching somebody who's probably in our age category, trying so hard to get their um, smartphone to work, sitting yeah. there, you know, like, <laughs> and this gentleman's like the harder he pushed, he thought the, the harder I push, the better it's going to work. And I, I was laughing to myself and then I stopped because I felt sorry for him. But I mean, you have such an incredibly positive, like undaunted attitude about this that I wish I could put it in a bottle and sell it because a lot of uh, older taxi members, and I think a lot of older musicians in general um, are intimidated buy software and stuff. And you actually mentioned something in your email, which this is a good place to talk about it, is plugins, like loving plugins too much and having too many of them. So I'm just going to give you the floor. Tell your fellow members how you feel about that, because I think that too is a refreshing attitude. So, so let, let, let's look at the economic side first. You know, uh, we're, Norway is, uh, we, we have a quite high living standard in Norway. We have uh, uh, very well made out society with the uh, good stuff, you know, healthcare and everything, school and everything, you know, it's, 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 it's a very good country to live in. That's and cool. we have, uh, we have good wages as well. Uh, and so, so I, I guess I always been as compared to my fellow musicians or composers in, in, for instance, the United States, who I know many of them struggle to survive. So yes, I've been struggling as well, but 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 I, it's mostly because I've been spending money, not because I've been <laughs> earning too little. So so that that's the difference. And then we come to the plug-in history. So when I, when I started in in 2018 with with taxi, because I've been using so incredibly much money on plugins and libraries and stuff that I don't use. So all right, listen. Uh, you need one graphical, uh, no, not a graphical, but you need one good EQ plugin and not, for, not a channel strip, but a, uh, let's say FabFilter Pro Q. It works on everything. All right, there are all the good stuff there, but the FabFilter Pro Q works. End of story. So say that again, have, uh, I, I couldn't understand. Your accent was a little uh, no, difficult to Fab understand. FabFilter Pro Q, it's called. It's it's just an EQ plug. Fab Fab Filter, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and all the Fab filters are great, by the way. And and then you need uh, you don't need, but it's good to have a channel strip, which like emulates an SSL or an Eve console or or anything. And uh, uh, so so. But how many do you basically need? Do you need an API? Do you need, uh, I mean, come on, do you need an old Abbey Road mixing console? Uh, what I'm saying is that have one modern-ish sounding EQ or channel strip, and then you have like something that emulates like the 60s or something. Right. Like the Abbey Road stuff, for instance, you know, which is legendary, you know. and and then you, you have covered all you need, basically, because you, you as an old man, you, you've been working in the industry for a long time, and you mentioned it, you know, like working in the studios, you know, analog gear and all that. So, uh, I mean, if a guy comes in and wants to record a song, he basically doesn't care if it's an Neve console or an SSL console. 
No, I cannot use an SSL 4K because this is folk music. <laughs> Come on, uh, that's not how it works. Right. So why should we as composers and mediocre mixers care about which channel strip to use for what kind of music? You need one channel strip for modern stuff and maybe one for the old stuff. But there are other workarounds to make things sound old as well. I think that's brilliant advice, but I can tell you the reason that people have gear lust. It's um, again, because we're of the same generation, uh, at least in America and maybe in Norway, uh, when you're 16 years old and you're in high school, the guy who has the 1969 Camaro with the mag wheels and the Hurst shifter and the jacked up back end and the air scoop on the hood, he's a stud. And all young men, maybe I'm being overly generalized about that, but many young men really admired cars in high school. And wow, look, he got the mag wheels with seven spokes, not five. And yeah. the first shifter <laughs> knob, you know, is stainless steel, whatever. Um, I believe that gear lust is a more adult form of car lust. And it, the same may be true. I don't want to leave the girls out of the picture because maybe there's, there are women that feel the same way, but it, it's, it's that desire to tinker and explore and I've got something cool, but I agree with you a hundred percent that you don't need it. You are absolutely right. You could, you could make any record you want. 95% of records you want um, with nothing more than an SSL channel strip um, and, and an Abbey Road channel strip, uh, a, a, you know, basic compressor, a basic EQ, and you're good to go. Yeah, it, it's all right. Uh, I, I can't remember his name. Uh, this guy, he's, he's living close to you. You've been having him on, on Taxi TV a couple of times. He's a great mixer. Oh, Rob Shirelli. Yeah, Rob Shirelli. Uh, he's, uh, uh, I mean, I, I remember you asked him at uh, one episode of Taxi TV about, uh, Rob, do you see any changes in like the, and in, in how this it, things should sound? And he was like, well, I've noticed that uh, the reverb times are getting longer again. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but I mean, if you if you if you take that one sentence and you put it into EQs and you put it into whatever, so um, we're talking about how to make that frequency come up or down. We're talking about how to make the reverb sound longer or shorter. That's the basic you need. It's yes. called decay on the reverb. Decay. It's simple. See, it's one knob, you need to twist, and then you have shorter or longer reverb. And of course, you can do the nitty gritty and all that, but, but, but why? <laughs> but, but having decent reverbs is good, because right. that can make your production sound spacious and realistic, you know, in, in ways that are uh, maybe a bit different if you have like cheaper reverbs or, or less, less good reverbs. So I would put my money in, in like instead of a couple of good reverb plugins, but you have cheap ones there as well. Uh, Valhalla, yeah, which is a great company. Uh, it's based in, in I think it's based in California somewhere, uh, and I, and I they charge you like fifty quid for every plugin they make. I mean, like that plugin costs fifty bucks. That costs fifty bucks. That costs fifty bucks. That one is free. But they make such great reverbs, and I know even industry professionals are using their products. So why shouldn't we? Absolutely. And, Come on. <laughs> and you're right about, you know, uh, I mean, basically it comes down to plate, chamber, hall or room, yeah. short or long, fat or skinny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah but, I mean, that's a good point. And fat or skinny, you can use just a low pass filter or a high pass filter, yeah. you know? You don't need even need an EQ for that, right? You can you just take away everything from like five hundred and down, two fifty and down. Yeah. So so yeah. But it's common sense, which and just listening and paying attention, which you clearly did. The uh, reverb is a great example. 
if you put a little bit of reverb on a kick drum and also on a cello and a vocal and it's all the same reverb and now your mix sounds a little bit like that well mm. it's because you've got stuff swimming around down in the bottom yeah. below 500 hertz so just you know use the high pass filter and it's going to sound like a record <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I've seen, actually seen videos of, of, of great mixers who's been like only using low pass and high pass filters before they even started on any compression or EQing or whatever. And you can call that just tidying things up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so you take away what isn't supposed to be there. And, and, uh, and so it doesn't accumulate up, you know, when you, you have like you said, cello, bass, bass drum, you know, or kick drum, you know, they, they're all fighting in the same area, you know, so, so you have to figure out the less frequencies they need to fight about, the, the easier it is to sort of make it sound well together. I, I learned it by literally just sitting in a room, probably took me three months of whenever I had a moment to just sit there and take an instrument uh take a bass guitar that's on a three and a half minute song and just sit there and sweep the equalizers okay now i'm listening to the top end too much too little same with the mid-range same with the lower mid-range same with the bottom <coughs> excuse me and if you do that often enough pretty soon you don't even have to think about numbers you just instinctively reach for the frequency that you think it's at and more often than not you're going to be right it's Exactly, exactly. But you have to use it, you know, and instead of like sitting there with a thousand channel strips, if you have this one that you know, it's so much easier as well. Great advice.